for Johnny by Billu, 18th of December 2021. Dear friends of our most beloved departed Chandra, I wish we could have gathered today under happier circumstances. Our family is most grateful to you who have come in person and to friends in other places, particularly Spain, attending live through technology. We are a Hindu family, but not religious, so there will be no religious ceremony. Instead, in this remembrance, we will hear some personal recollections from family and friends and songs from some of Chandra's favorite artists that reflect his nature and the life he led. Chandra, as he's known to his friends in Spain, Shekhar, as he's known to school and university friends, or Johnny, as he is known to our family, leaves behind two beautiful, loving, and proud daughters. Lorena Aishwarya Roy, aged 13. Adriana Lakshmi Roy, aged 11. Lorena and Adriana, your father's blood family is deeply hurt that you were prevented from being here today in person or attend through technology. It would have been your late father's dearest wish that you could have said goodbye to him on his final journey in the company of his blood family and closest friends. Today's remembrance is not only so that your father's blood family and close friends can share their ex life experiences of your much loved and respected father, but it will also serve as a permanent record of how much people treasured him and will miss him. Lorena and Adriana, dear precious granddaughters and nieces, by the time that you get to see what is taking place today, it may well be that you are both young adults and free and independent of mind to make your own choices in life. But your grandma, Arati, wants you to both remember how much your late father loved you and how much he was loved. He gave his life for you. Although the next few years of your lives may be difficult, please know that your grandma, Arati, your uncle Robin, and I will always be there for you in every way, so that you may realize the legacy of your late father and make the choices that will lead to your happiness. That is all we want for you. Dear friends, as Johnny's eldest brother, I struggled as to where to begin my memories of little Johnny. Johnny was only two years old when our late father, Shurja Kanta Roy, passed away in 1971 at the age of 37. Arati was only 23, Robin was five and I was eight. As you can imagine, life was brutally difficult for a young woman in the early 1970s, struggling single-handedly to bring up three young boys and an infant. Manage the difficulties created by my late father's business partner and look after her visiting 78-year-old mother-in-law. The support services that we take for granted today simply did not exist then. However, our mother is made of stern stuff. Instead of returning to Calcutta, as she was pushed to by selfish relatives, she was determined as a young widow to bring us all up in England. She sold our father's business and car, paid off the mortgage, and did all sorts of work to keep money coming in, including occasionally using our home as a bed and breakfast. Funny how all the, stop, all the friends that used to come round when Dad was alive soon stopped coming. Were it not for a string of circumstances in her own life, including the death of her own mother, within an hour of her birth, I have no doubt that Arati Poda had the talent to go to university and onto a successful career. She made all the sacrifices of a loving mother. Even at the age of 75 now, our mother's strength, spirit and determination would put women 50 years younger than her in the shade. Money was always tight, but we always had good hot food every day warm clothes, a roof over our heads, made-to-order birthday cakes, and presents at Christmas and on birthdays. We were also a happy family. Some of you here today can attest to that. To my dying day, I shall be grateful to our mother for what she has done for us. So that was the background against which our two-year-old Johnny was raised. It fell to, be a, fell to me to be a father figure something I may not always have been good at, but I tried my best. I was therefore particularly close to Johnny in those early years, not only because he was the baby of the family, but he also bore a strong physical remembrance, resemblance to Dad. I recall teaching Johnny when he was five how to read and write using books given to me by our dad, 
the Ladybird Book of Handwriting, the Collins Book of Mammals, the Ladybird Book of Napoleon, and the Beacon Book of Arithmetic. Johnny was a fast learner, and by the age of nine, he could do differential calculus, all of which was confirmed by his Whitefield school teachers at the parents' open evenings that I went to for my brothers when mum had to work. When mum was at work, we boys went to Basing Hill Park to play football, and afterwards the five-year-old Johnny's legs were tired, so I piggybacked him all the way home. I taught Johnny how to ride a bicycle in Montpelier Way without coasters, and I was impressed at him getting 99% at his cycling proficiency test. I regularly walked with him, he, uh, he was six and I was 12, to the dentist in Garth Road when mum was at work. He was never afraid of the dentist and often whistled through the gap in his front teeth. One man went to Meadow, Mower Meadow, went to Mower Meadow. As Johnny grew up, he effortlessly made many friends. It was to be a defining characteristic. One afternoon, the chauffeur Bentley of the Japanese ambassador turned up outside our home and out sprang Johnny, saying goodbye to his Japanese friend from Wessex Garden School. Later, you will hear further recollections from Johnny's friends from Wessex Gardens and Whitefield schools. He was also resourceful and reliable as a brother and was always there to support his eldest brother, including blow-drying my hair for my university graduation and somehow turning up unexpectedly at the Royal Albert Hall to wish me well. And for all his talents, and for all his talents, he was never the showing-off type or too busy to help anyone in need. After I left the UK in 1989 and spent the next few years in Europe, I had less contact with Johnny as he chose a life in Spain and achieved a successful career in banking, like Robin and myself having visited over 30 countries in the course of a career. But we stayed in touch and I often visited him in Madrid before and up to his wedding. I will shortly read some recollections from his famed friends in Spain. There are many more fond and brotherly things I could say about Johnny. As a smart and cool dude, he naturally and effortlessly attracted female attention. Style-wise and sartorially, he outclassed all of us brothers. But I will stop there now and leave it to others to say more. Oh!
Thank you, Varesh, for those wonderful sentiments about Chandra and the way he led his life. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for attending in person and through the video link from Spain. Thank you for sharing our grief and for remembering and celebrating the life of our beloved Chandra Roy. I am Robin Roy, Chandra's brother. Chandra was 53 when he passed away at his flat in Madrid on the 27th of November this year, 2021. Something that came as a shock for all of us, a wonderful young man who had been taken from us many decades before his time. He leaves behind two beautiful daughters, the Roy family, and our mother in particular, together with colleagues and friends that all loved him. Chandra was the most devoted and loving father I have ever known. Many of you will have seen this firsthand with his children, and some of you in Spain have mentioned this to me since his passing. In the most challenging of circumstances, he sacrificed his own future to shape the minds of his children and to give them the means to independently build a better life for themselves when they leave home. This is the greatest gift a parent can give a child, to prepare them well and let them go. He opened their eyes to what the world had to offer beyond the shores of Spain, and in particular Britain, where he was raised, and India, his heritage. He opened their eyes to what the world had to offer beyond the shores of Spain, and particular Britain where he was raised and, uh, and his heritage in India. He taught them ambition with confidence, tenacity, fearlessness to take on challenges as part of their personal development. He taught them the importance of family, education, uh, and English as a language, something very important for them in the years ahead. He was an excellent cook of many things Spanish, Mediterranean, and Indian, and a connoisseur of wine. He cooked delicious food for his children whenever they stayed with him and indulged them at high-end restaurants to give them an understanding of some of the finer things in life. He took them for fun holidays on the coast of Spain and sightseeing in London to broaden their minds. He was a Londoner, after all, and the children knew they had a life in London too, just waiting for them. He showed them the love. He showed them the love that all children need, in the end, he lived for his children, and what a fantastic job he did. Fifty years ago, this is what our mother did for us as a single parent as we all grew up in northwest London, and what a fantastic job she did too. I have some fond memories of Chandra. In his youth, he was an Arsenal fan. Well, enough said about that. He had a Neil Diamond hairstyle too, that I can live with, 
and we still have a picture of that at home. And he got his, the best O-level exam results of all of us at 16 years of age. One morning at our early home in Golden Screen, I entered his room finding him hung over on his bed with a large bollard from the motorway in his room. I can offer no explanation for this, but I wish I was with him the night before. He was a youngest brother making his own way through adolescence and we loved him. In his early days in Madrid, almost 30 years ago, I visited him many, many times on my own and with my friends and much later with my wife and children. He showed me the sights, Parc del Retiro, I love that park and I love the horchata there, the Prado and what a breathtaking museum history that is, lovely restaurants, El Corte Inglés where I bought some suits and saw live lobsters being sold for the first time in the basement, busy nightclubs including a flamenco performance and so much, much more. I drove him from Madrid to Barcelona and back the next day. He stayed there for a while but for the life of me I cannot remember why. He introduced me to the music of Juan Luis Cara, which I love, and a selection of delicious wines of Rioja and Ribera del Duro. He knew how to live life. And of course, the simple things in life are all special if the people you live them well with are special too. When I met his children, I was blown away at what a dad he had become, what he did for them, and how much they adored him. He was a mum and a dad all rolled into one. Once again, may I thank everyone for taking this moment to remember Chandra, for your kind thoughts and prayers, for your flowers, cards, and messages. Chandra's legacy is his children, Lorena Roy and Adriana Roy, and the way in which he touched their lives, and indeed all of us, in his own special way. We are all very, very lucky to have an opportunity to live a life on this beautiful earth and leave something positive to behind when we depart. Chandra has done this with distinction and is now in a better place. God bless him, his children, our mother in particular, our family, his friends and colleagues. Chandra, we love you and we miss you. We will honour your legacy. Lorena and Adriana, your daddy will always live on in your heart and in your memories. Remember him well and remember your time with him and remember in particular the things he taught you as our mother has reminded you from time to time. You will always have a home and a life waiting for you in London. That was his last wish. We know that was his last wish. Only we know that was his last wish. We will always be here for you. Thank you.
From Edward Trahern, Chandra arrived in Spain, I think in 1993, and spent the first year working in Barcelona. He then moved to Madrid and soon started working at CM Capital Markets. Although not working in the same department, we were in close proximity and quickly became friends. This may have been the result of non-Spaniards not having family close by or an extensive network of old friends, tending to congregate together in the local bars after work. Chandra quickly became a well-known figure in Madrid nightlife and known to many of the staff working in the bars and the clubs. He was indispensable when trying to gain access to the latest and most fashionable venues. Also during this period, his career in the money and futures markets took off and he became a key member of the team. I am sure many of you are aware that most brokers do not last much beyond their mid-30s. The fact that Chandra continued working in the markets until past his 50th birthday is a testament to how good he was at his work. The contacts he made and how he was appreciated by his employers. During this period, Chandra was always enthusiastic about trying new activities. These included golf, skiing, horse riding, tennis and squash. I am not sure he carried all of them carried on with all of them, but he was always happy to have a go. When he started driving lessons, I like, I, like a few others, thought that his instruction was best left to others with professional experience. In March 1999, Chandra and I decided to walk part of the pilgrim's route of St. James's. We walked the 150 miles from Leon to Santiago de Compostela. We arrived in Leon by bus from Madrid in the middle of a snowstorm. Anyway, that didn't put us off, and off we set. After three hours, the Guarda Civil turned up with three other pilgrims in the back of their vehicle and offered us a lift to the next pilgrim's hostel. The snowstorm wasn't going to put us off, and we declined the offer of a lift. Half an hour later, reporters from the local paper and the radio station turned up to interview the two mad English pilgrims. The next day we featured in the local papers. The following 10 days walking were a struggle at times. We both kept each other's spirits up during long days with sore and blistered feet and cold nights staying in unmanned hostels. Luckily our orienteering, orienteering and map skills were pretty good and, we were, the, and we, were, we were only lost for once for more than half an hour. Eventually about five kilos lighter we arrived in Compostela and completed our Pilgrim's passports, which enabled to get a heavily discounted Iberia flight back to Madrid. The experience bonded us together in perhaps a way the military experience. We were always going to look out for one another. I returned to London in 2000 and for a few years would return to Madrid for the occasional weekend and would always see Chandra. He, he too came to my wedding in England in 2003 and I took my, wedding, uh, my wife to his wedding in Zaragoza. I am so sorry I can't be with you today to express my condolences. Chandra was very much a part of my life some, during some of the happiest years of my life. I will always miss him and struggle to think that he will, we will never speak again. He has been taken from his family far too young and I cannot imagine how you are all feeling. Regardless of eulogies saying about the passing being in a better place, he should be here with his family and it is very wrong that he is not. From Edward Trahan, Edward, I know you're watching. I hope I did some justice to the delivery. The next reading is from Finbar John Murray. Finbar, I know you are watching at this very second. Again, I hope I do justice in my delivery to your words. Hi to all of you who are present together on this solemn day. Most of you don't know me because we never met. So let me introduce myself. My name is Finbar Murray, and it is through the voice of Beresh that I speak a few words to you about Chandra. In the spirit of the Irish wake, it is customary, if, even if just for a moment, to raise above sorrow in grief and mourn in happiness by celebrating the life of a loved one past. This we can do because we are surrounded and supported by those who love, care, and understand. Today it is our turn to celebrate the life of Chandra. 
and I will do so by evoking two fond memories about Chandra, not two spe specific anecdotes, but rather like two images of Chandra that remain and will remain with me for the rest of my life. I first met Chandra back in the 90s at CM Capital Markets. We were supposed to be two brokers, or at least he was. Me? I don't know. After all, I was a recent philosophy graduate with no clue about markets. And it is precisely because of this that we came together. He would mentor me in those things I found incommensurable with my way of thinking, making my job that much easier. And for this, I am very grateful. For he helped furnish me with the tools necessary to make a life out of something that at that moment was completely alien to me. But what is more important for me is that we kicked it off from the very start. He was an in Indian lad trying to survive in a foreign country, and I was an Irish lad trying to do the same in the same country, in the same company, with the same goals at the same time. So you can imagine the complicity and so when there was time for fun, it was all banter, taking the mick out of each other. This I'm sure Ed will remember. We would joke incessantly about each other's roots with the pride that came with being minority factions in the workplace and in our environment. This is what bonded us. This is what nurtured our friendship. But what gave meaning and perspective to all this fun and banter for me is my second and final reflection by the time we had established ourselves professionally and gone our own ways, Chandra to a different firm and I to the banking world, we nevertheless continued our friendship. We were safe in Madrid. We had made it. Good job, stability and prospects. So I was first, that is, the first to get married to my then girlfriend, Maria Victoria, and the first of us to have children, Inez and Pablo Murray. And it is from the moment of Inez's birth that Chandra erased above friendship for me. He became kin. I could never have imagined that somebody could dote over another ch another's child with so much sincerity and enthusiasm. Chandra blew our minds, Victoria's and mine. For us, he was now one of the family because he loved helplessly the way family do. So with this said, I make my most painful and yet at the same time most beautiful reflection about Chandra. If Chandra was capable of loving my children in the way that he did, I cannot begin to imagine how much he must have loved his two daughters, Lorena and Adriana. And I have no doubt that together with his mother's pain, these t and uh, taken together with his mother's pain, these two little people are those that are most hurting at this present mo moment. And this makes me very sad. Let me finish by saying, or by reminding myself that Chandra was above all a dad, a son and a brother, but most importantly a person, a human being, that loved and was loved, and that belongs to the most wonderful collective that is humanity. And it is for these reasons and many more that we should celebrate his life, and because after all, we are all brothers. Thank you.
My name's Paul Rodriguez. I'm uh, Shekhar. I was Shekhar's best friend at primary school. He was a funny, kind, and great pal to have along through the trials and tribulations of childhood. We had birthdays together, we rode our bikes together, and listened to music on our increasingly fancy 1980s stereo systems that we were very proud of. I remember his bedroom with a radio tuned into Capital Radio listening to the greatest hits as he did his homework. He studied hard at school and set an example to many in his class. Shekhar likes cool music, much like his persona. He was out outwardly a very quiet and placid person, but he had a great sense of humour and was tremendous fun to be around. I remember him trying to teach me his cool walk. It didn't work. You either had it or you didn't. He had it, I didn't. But by being cool did not mean by any means that he was aloof. He was always willing to have fun and to not take himself too seriously. I remember he played a fantastic widow twanky in the school play. The, school, the thought of this still makes me smile. We got into scrapes together, but I knew I could always rely on him and him on me. When we went to secondary school, we met and made more great friends. Some, I'm delighted to say, are here today. Whitefield School in those days was very much a melting pot of talents, which produced highly successful people, but also had some quite unsavoury characters. I only tell you this because Shekhar had a gift of being able to deal with all of them. The hard lads, as it were, respected Shekhar with his no-nonsense approach. And with everyone else, he was just known as a warm and gentle and friendly person. I knew him as Shekhar, his family called him Chandra, and he was also known as Johnny or Shek. Despite his different names, he was one man, a kind and honourable person who loved his family and his friends and would do anything for them. I, like many, regret losing touch with him and I hope we can all use this as a lesson to stay close to people we treasure I will always treasure I will always treasure his memory and the good times we had together
Thank you, Paul. So, my name's Wa. I was at uh, school with Shekhar. I'd like to share you some of the memories that I had of Shekhar. Shekhar, Chandra, Roy, Johnny. These are all the names that his friends and family knew him by. For me, it was just plain Sheik. But Sheik was never just plain. I remember meeting Sheik for the first time at Whitefields our local comprehensive, where we spent many years. He was tall, even then, immaculately dressed, with polished shoes, and I had, I remember clearly, this really professional-looking school bag. He had the best. I was in awe of this person, and I wanted to be his friend straight away. He was definitely a cool kid. We got to know each other well, and we became good friends. I remember he was calm, even under extreme pressure. I recall a time when we thought it would be a good idea to go down from school to Capital Radio in London during our lunch break. We thought it would be good to get some autographs during our lunch times. Of course, there were no famous stars there. We returned both afraid, disappointed, back to Whitefields, sometime mid-afternoon, way, way past lunchtime. We were met by an angry history teacher. I was terrified, but Sheikh, being the calm, collective person that he was, talked the way out of being in deep water. And that's how he was. He was able to handle any situation life threw at him. Another fond memory was our road trip to America during our summer holidays. Two teenagers, barely out of school, exploring the world. It was during that trip where we shared many emotions, highs and lows that strengthened our bond. Visiting theme parks in Orlando, driving for hours along the coast when we'd only just passed our driving test. Talk, taking overnight coaches and sleeping in bus stations to save money. Not washing for days and barely enough to eat, but we didn't care, that was life then. Those are the times when we would laugh and cry. Memories which I still remember today. Even though I hadn't seen Chef for a few years, just thinking about that time in Miami, where we thought it would be nice to have a tan to bring back to the UK, makes me smile. Little did we know that we'd probably spend a little bit too much time on that beach as we returned back to the UK completely charcoal. Chef, it's been an honour to know you and to share some amazing memories. You were always cheerful and full of fun. I remember many of the good times we had together as we went through the years at Whitefields. You were always the person I could go to and rely on when I needed support. Rest in peace, my friend. You will not be forgotten.
Today we honour, respect and fondly remember a good, good man who touched and enriched all of our lives in so many different ways, Mr. Shekhar Roy. Whether you knew him as Shekhar, Johnny, Chandra or Shek, as we all like to call him, he was exactly the same guy to us all. He was your trusted friend. You knew it and felt it the moment you met him. Shek was even at a young age a tall and imposing, Bollywood handsome figure of a young man. Uh, surrounded by friends, never moments away from the loud and booming laugh that I and everyone will remember forever. Undoubtedly, his greatest accomplishment were his two beautiful daughters, Lorena and Adriana, who I had the pleasure of meeting some years ago. Two more gentle, kind, polite young ladies you could never wish to meet. They were his life, and he spent his life making sure they were looked after and loved. We never got the chance to speak often, but when we did, it was always about them. He was bursting with pride and was always eager to share with me the touching memories a father shares with his children. Shekhar, we are heartbroken, but we will never forget you. From everyone here today, and for those who could not attend, it was an honor to know you and share some of the best times of our lives with you. My dear, dear friend, you will always stay alive in our memories and in our hearts. May your soul rest in heavenly peace. Smile, though your heart is aching Smile even though it's breaking When there are clouds in the sky You'll get by If you smile through your fear and sorrow Smile and maybe tomorrow You'll see the sun come shining through For you Light up your face with gladness Hide every trace of sadness Although a tear may be ever so near That's the time you must keep on trying Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile the time you must keep on trying smile what's the use of crying you'll find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile